Hi there students, welcome to my CSEC physics tutorials. I am Dane Campbell. In this video, I will be looking at Galileo and the scientific method. The objectives for this video are 1. Define the scientific method. 2. Describe how the scientific method is used in a real life situation. And 3. Discuss how the methodology employed by Galileo contributed to the development of physics. Now let's look at what, the, what is the scientific method. According to dictionary.com, the scientific method is a method of research in which a problem is identified, relevant data are gathered, a hypothesis is formulated from these data, and the hypothesis is empirically tested. Now we look at a graphic representation of the scientific method. In this graphic, it shows that an observation is made first. However, this does not have to be the case. For example, a question could be asked first. So, in this example, we have make an observation followed by ask a question, then a hypothesis is formulated and this hypothesis tries to answer the question. An experiment is done. The results are analyzed and the re results are reported. Before the results are reported, an analysis of the results will take place. In this analysis will show either of two things. One, that the result supports a hypothesis. If that is the case, then the results are reported and the hypothesis is accepted. The second possibility is that the results doesn't support the hypothesis, in which case we have to try again. So we start over by making another hypothesis and we also report our results. This report will be dealt with in another video. Now let's look at a simple way in which the scientific method is applied. So we have our flowchart which shows the steps of the scientific method. So make an observation. So our observation could be that you notice that popsicles take longer to freeze than the ice cubes in the tree. Next, you ask a question. Does sugar affect the time it takes for water to freeze? Then you form a hypothesis, which is a likely suggestion as to your answer for the question. So you could say, the more sugar there is in a solution, the longer it takes to freeze. Then you carry out an experiment to test your hypothesis. So let's say we have three containers with equal volumes of water but different amounts of sugar. One with no, no sugar, one with 5 grams of sugar, and the other with 10 grams of sugar. So you allow them to freeze and record the time it takes. Then you look at your results. What was the, the significance or was there a significant difference in the times taken? If so, then you can be sure that the sugar affected the time it takes to freeze. But if the difference was not significant, we would say that there is... We would say that the sugar does not have an effect on the time it takes for the water to freeze. In either case, we report our results. So we write a scientific report. Now let's look at Galileo. Galileo was born in Pisa, Italy in 1564. He was a philosopher because he thought about many things. He thought about many things in nature 
and asked how they, how they occurred. He was a mathematician. He lectured mathematics at the University of Pisa for over 10 years. He was a scientist. Galileo did not only theorize, but he experimented. He was an astronomer. Learning of the invention of the telescope, Galileo built his own telescope and looked at the moon. He also discovered the first four moons of Jupiter. In the latter part, Galileo was charged for heresy because his ideas contradicted the views of the church. He was put under house arrest and spent the last years of his life at home. Then he died in Arcetri, Italy in 1642. Now, we are going to look at Galileo and the scientific revolution. The burden of physics as a science in the modern context, uniting theory and experiment in its approach, only began with the work of Galileo. In this respect, his work was a major contribution to the scientific revolution. It is difficult to overemphasize the significance of Galileo's methodology, especially since the prevailing intellectual climate was still dominated by Aristotle's views. Against such a background, still unreceptive to experimental methods, we find Galileo experimenting with pendulums, with moving bodies, with air thermometers, as well as with mirrors and lights. Galileo's methodology, rather than relying primarily on intellectual propositions and assumptions, employed experimentation to achieve insights into nature. From initial observations of phenomena, for example falling bodies, hypotheses could be formulated and subjected to further experimental tests. With enough of these generalizations could be made in a precise quantitative form, which would enable one to predict future behavior. In this way, it was Galileo, above all, who first laid the foundations for the standard, standard of inquiry adopted in physics, a standard which is a hallmark of physics even today. But he achieved even more than this. In addition to these technical improvements in the practice of science, there were two conceptual novelties also. The first involved him in a clear-eyed decision not to ask of nature why questions, but how questions. Aristotle had asked, why do bodies fall? He got the uninformative answer, because they are heavy. Galileo set out to describe how an object falls and obtained the kinematic equations. What Galileo was seen to be doing was asking the right questions as well as attacking simpler problems first. Secondly, Galileo idealized. Where Aristotle wished to base his laws, of, laws on raw nature, Galileo supposed. In the case of motion, what would happen in an ideal situation, say in the absence of friction? Quicker answers were obtained when allowed, which allowed sorry, some understanding of the phenomenon of motion. Asking how questions, idealizations, experimentation, and the use of mathematics all came together for the first time in one man, Galileo. 
Thus, we can say Galileo set the revolutionary path for 17th century science and beyond. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share. And for tutoring services in math, biology, chemistry, and physics, check out my website www.onlinesciencetutor.net. You can follow on Facebook at c 6 tutor one and on Instagram at Online Science Tutor. Thanks again.